everybody. How's it going? I'm I'm glad I'm five minutes late, but still that's that's fine. Yeah. Well, I'm glad everyone's jumping on. If you're if you're watching this from replay, go in the comments right now. Type in replay, replay, replay. I want three, re, three, three replays. That's right. Uh, if you're watching this live, put in the chat live. I want to see who's there. Um, if you're with me here live, the cool thing is, is guess what? You can actually ask me some questions. So definitely jump in there as much as you guys possibly can. Let's ask me some questions and then we can go over. Today we are going to talk about overcoming sellers' objections. Now, even if you're not in real estate, th this is still some, some, I'll teach you some strategies and things you can do in almost any sales tech, sales environment to overcome someone's objection, right? Depending on what it is. Like, cause there's various always, there's always similar stuff, but I think what, what's helped me a lot this last couple of years is learning how to uh, overcome objections. And, and what I'm gonna talk about here is how to prevent getting those, those said objections. Because if you're getting a lot of objections again and again and again and again, it's the same objection. A lot of times it's you saying something, whether that's in, depending on what you're selling or for or far like me presenting an offer to a seller, it's what I'm saying or how I'm wording things that is causing them to have that objection or keep on saying it. Right? So there's a lot of things you can, you can do. And we'll talk about that. And this is all based on real estate here where you can offset their objections so they don't have those objections and you don't have to worry about it. The best objection, the best strategy to avoid objection is presenting an offer or presenting your in, in such a way that they don't, there's, it's almost impossible for them to, to object to it. You know, if they're, if they, if they have an option to do so, sometimes they just can't for whatever reason, right? Even if they want to do something like this, they maybe they just can't. Um, but if they're, if they're able to do it, you present the offer, they're gonna they're gonna really want to jump all over it, right? So that's awesome. We actually have some people in comments. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, where's my comments at? Here we are. Okay, beautiful. So go ahead and um, <laughs> go ahead and put in the in the, the comments, guys. That if you're watching live, put in live right now. We got uh, a couple of viewers on right now watching live. I love it, love it. Put in live, and then also put in the chat too. And even if you're watching on replay. Put in the chat any any objections that you're getting, and if I don't if I don't actually uh, comment on it uh, or, or talk about it in live, I can we can reach out in the comments. We can talk about that after the fact, right? So even in the replays, feel free to put in objections that you're getting, and then we can go over how to overcome them, right? And and, and how to uh, you know that that makes sense for you guys. Um, some objections people come up like talk to me about, I'm like, I've, I'm, I've never had that objection, but I guess I would say something like this, right? And again, it's all about like how you present offers, how you do those things where you're, they, you're, you're constantly disarming them. Um, so anyways, let's, let's, let's get into it, right? Does anybody have any objections we can start talking about? And by the way, when, when do objections normally come up? Someone put in the chat, when do objections normally come up? Is it like, would it like beginning of the process, you know, towards the middle, towards the end? What are some of the objections? Right. And, and here's the thing. When you're, when you're, for me, I noticed a lot of objections that they happen is usually kind of like at, at the end or sometimes the very beginning, not so much in the, in the middle, but you can kind of come across those and, and kind of iron them out as you're going. When you're presenting someone, when you're talking to someone and you're, you're doing whether it's a sales environment or, or you're just doing like you're putting an offer, trying to buy this house and I'm talking to the seller face to face. If you're talking more than they are, you're doing it wrong. And I'm not saying, oh, I got to find some long witted sellers. No, uh, you should be in control of the conversation and talking the least. Because if if you can do that and, and, and how you do that is one, ask the right questions. You should be the question asker. You should be a pig is what one of my mentors would say, professional information getter, P I G pig. And it's all about asking questions. I'm usually for the, for the most part, the very first, I mean, if I'm, if I'm with a seller for like an hour, the very first 45 minutes, 
I'm asking questions the entire time. We're having a conversation and it's just question after question. Now there's a way of doing it where you're not like drilling them. You have to be generally curious about their situation. Like, like I'm, I'm generally curious about, about your situation. And so you're like, and even in your body language, like you need to be paying attention. You need to be, you don't need to seem like you're just asking questions, just to ask questions. And you're just like, like a memorized script. So a lot of things I'll do to kind of pull more information out of people. Again, this does get with objections. I'll get that. I'll get there in a second, guys. It's all going to make sense. But I'll ask them all these questions about their, like, why do they want to sell? Why does it, why does it make sense to sell now? Why, why didn't you sell before? Why, why don't you wait? Um, and, and so I'm finding out all of this stuff and the first initial questions that you're asking a lot of times, a lot of people will, it's, it's not, it's only service level to really get rid of all of the objections. You have to go deeper questions, you know, like what, after you're, you're having the conversation and, and you just ask them like, so what if, if something, if you don't sell this property uh, in the next two weeks, like you're telling me, what, what will happen? I'm just curious. What do you think? What do you think would, would end up happening? And so now like, oh, well, I, I would, you know, I'm, I'm, they would foreclose on the property. They would sell it. I would, my credit would be destroyed. And, you know, we have to find somewhere else to live. I don't know where we live. Like, and you'd find somewhere else to live. Like, well, yeah, I don't know. Maybe with my parents, I guess, or my, my wife's parents or, you know, and so you're just keep on asking these questions. You're getting deep level. And, like, and then like, so how would that, it, God, I mean, like, I'm a dad. It's like, I, 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 that'd be a terrible feeling. I'm just curious. Like, so how would that kind of affect your as home life? I'm just, and they would be like, Oh, it'd be terrible. So I'm really getting into emotional depth when I'm talking to, to sellers. Emotional depth is, is very, very crucial when you're talking to these people, when talking to anyone. Okay. So get into emotional depth with, 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 with the sellers, with the person, right? You're not just asking service level questions. You know, you're getting deep down to the emotions like of, of the pain point and of what they're running towards. So I gave a couple examples of some questions of getting to the pain point, because if you can get to the real pain point and get to what their real goal would be, what they're, what they're running towards, it's the carrot and stick. You need to find out what their carrot is and what the stick is. So in that example, I just gave, if they're about to go through foreclosure, I don't just say, oh yeah, you're going to lose your house, right? That's going to suck. The key of, of overcoming all objection is, is going to be this one sentence. Okay. Or two sentences, whatever. The key of overcoming objections is, is going to be this. If you say it, it's wrong. If they say it, it's right. If you say it's wrong, if they say it, it's right. So what I mean by that, if I tell them they're going to lose their house, if they don't sell it in, in this two weeks, and that's probably going to mess up with your family. And that's probably going to mess up with your relationships. They're just thinking I'm an, an, I'm an a-hole. If they tell me that, then they will, it's true. Then it's not me telling them this is what's going to happen. It's like, Oh yeah. Like, so they're, I'm not convincing them at that point. They're, they're convinced themselves and they, they're maybe they haven't even, they've maybe thought about it at service level, but when you put it into context and you're asking questions where it's like getting into real nitty gritty as far as like, and you have to be, again, you can totally screw this up if you're not doing this right way screwed up. And, 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 but if you're sincere, and you're using the right tonality, the curious tone. You're you're genuinely curious. You're using the buying language. You're just like, you know, I can't even imagine. I I I would that affects you know your your guys's personal relationship and your marriage. Like, how's that been kind of going on? Like, like when I when uh, my wife are always fighting, I always have a hard time. I how is it with you guys? And so when you're sincere and 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 generally like having that conversation, people open up. They don't feel like you're You'd be surprised at what willing, what people will need to do. And here's the thing, regardless if it's good or bad, when we're talking about ourselves, whether you're in a bad situation or not, we're, it, we do get some dopamine hits. And so 
if I'm talking about myself and and I'm talking with you, my, my viewer, right? If we're in person and if we're talking and we're, 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 uh, we're getting actually having a real conversation, I'm going to feel good. I'm going to feel connected. That's a better way to put it. I'm going to feel connected. I'm going to feel good because I'm talking about myself. Regardless if you said nothing about yourself or anything like that, but I'm, I'm going to subconsciously connect that good feeling to you. And so as far as like me kind of unsurfacing some of their pain points, but I also surface what they can do. And suddenly now they have hope. Now they have these things like, oh, this, yeah, I mean, it's not the ideal scenario, but it's a lot better than that thing. So now that, that negative, that, that feeling of hope and, 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 you know, potential prosperity and all that stuff is now subconsciously attached with me. So when they think of me or, or see me again, that's attached. So this whole like building rapport stuff that people talk about, it, it's talking about, oh yeah, so how's your kids and how's the weather? Even if you're sincere, no one believes that. No one believes you're sincere. But me just talking about asking questions about them, I will build more rapport than you talking about the weather and your kids and whatever, guaranteed. Because I'm they're, they're, they're emotionally being attached to me just by me asking questions in the right way, okay? Again, this all, we'll get to objections, I promise, I promise. But again, this is this is where we're at. And, and to really overcome objections, you have to get to the real objections. If I say, no, this is not the right time to sell. If they say, excuse me, this is not the right time to sell. Well, they're gonna lose their house in a week, so it is the right time for sell, right? I'm not gonna tell them that like, like that, but so that's obviously not a real objection. You need to, you know, so that means you haven't, you're only surface level at that point. They're just saying an excuse. One of my friends and mentors would say, um, you would have a, a, a neighbor come over and they would say, hey, can I, can I borrow your lawnmower neighbor? And, uh, and he would say, well, yeah, you could, but here's the thing, you know, um, today's Thursday and the game's on. Well, what does that have to do with your lawnmower? Well, if I don't want you to, if I don't want you to, to borrow my bar, if I don't want you to, if I don't want to lend my lawnmower to you, one excuse is good as the other. So just any excuse will work to not sell the house or not to agree or whatever it is, right? It's the same, same thing. So we're getting past the, the, hey, we got a live on there. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Seth. Hey, and I saw you yesterday. Dude. It was good, good catching up. Well, I guess we didn't even catch up, but it was good seeing you, man. Keep up, keep coming to the events, man. I'd love to see you more. Um, but, but yeah, does this make sense as far as like how this kind of relates to objections? Like when you're having, and we'll go in more details in specific objections too, like, cause even still, even with that emotional connection and we'll really unearthing the, the stick and the carrot, you're still going to get objections. And so we'll go over some, some of those things, but it's really important. If you're getting objection over rejection, you're just going surface level, sur surface level and you're not really getting to the true core of the challenge that the, that person's personally in person that person is personally in kind of you don't have to know words to be to make money guys trust me um perfect okay so darn notifications drive me driving me mad okay phenomenal i'm digging this i'm digging this guys now what we have here i'm gonna put up my chat up here and it's there we go i can move it sorry guys i'm moving the chat so i can actually see it because it's not not being okay anyway sorry that's that's not yours's problem it's me this is me just being a interesting person okay <laughs> very entertaining trust me okay now once we get to the pain point we're diving into that you want to find out what they're running towards What's the good thing? This is stuff that everyone wants to talk about. What would be the ideal scenario? Now, I, ideal scenario, like if they're moving for a job, like, you know, I, I don't want to sell this property, so I'd rather keep it, but I still want this job, so I want to sell it, you know, or I'm going to lose the property, so I got to sell it. Ideally, I want to keep it. So ask them what they're running towards, right? And and what would they do, you know, and, and, I, and I ask questions like, okay, great. So I have to kind of understand a little bit where they're at, and I need to find out where they want to go. 
right? So right now, if they're currently sitting where they're at, they're going to lose their house, lose everything. But that's the current level, okay? And where, what's the ideal scenario? So they want, everyone wants a million dollars for the house, right? No, but they want, they want to sell their house, right? Because that's kind of like the best option for them. And so they don't lose it so that they don't have to sell it at an even greater discount down the road, depending on the circumstances, um, and, and remove this headache from them, right? So what is their ideal scenario? Just asking questions that gets into, so what would be, and I asked them that too, like, if you know what, Bob, if I can wave a magical wand and, and you know, kind of make things work how you want it to work, how would you, how would you, foresee this happening or excuse me how would you like this to happen what would be the best scenario for you and so they talk about a little bit like what's what do they want to do or and also ask questions like okay great so assuming you get the, the exact price you're looking for or I, I future pay so I was like you know once we become you know once we get this deal worked out and the numbers make sense for you numbers make sense for me we go forward we sell you get the cash in hand you know, if you don't mind me asking and, and feel free to tell me you know I'm never going to tell you, Jared, or tell me to tell me none of your business, bald guy. Um, what do you plan to do with that money once you once you sell the property? By the way, I had, have never had anyone not tell me what they're planning to do when I present it like that. When I say, by the way, you can tell me none of my none of your business. I don't want you. I mean, if you don't want to tell me, that's fine. But what what are you planning to do when you when you sell this property? What are you going to do with the money? Right? What are you going to do with the money? So I want, why do I want to know that? Because that's going to be, it's going to help me figure out their carrot. So if it's like, yeah, I mean, we have a thousand dollars or we have a hundred thousand dollars in equity, you know, we would probably just, you know, pay off the truck, I guess, you know, and probably put the rest in the bank. And, or, or we'd like, oh, well, when we have, you know, we just bought this house two years ago, but then my husband lost his job. And so, uh, we would, when we have, you know, a little bit of equity, so we don't be, you know, be able to, uh, you know, just having moving expenses, right? That's kind of what we're looking for. That's what we, that's what we want. We're trying to get to move out, you know, uh, and asking questions like, oh, so what, I'm just curious, like, if you're, what do you plan to do once you sell this property? Are you, are you, are you thinking of, are you going to try to buy again or do you, are you going to have to wait? What, what's your thought? So they're like, well, I'd like to buy again. I'm like, oh, is it, do you think that, I mean, your credit, you, did you talk to your loan people yet? If they, they would kind of, you know, be able to do something like that. And like, well, I'll oh, probably not because I just had this notice of default in my record. So, yeah, I guess we'd have to rent for a while. Okay, I see. So, I mean, is that, it's probably against some costs of moving. Like, do you know how much it would take it? Do you have an idea how much it would cost you to kind of pack everything up, moving van, maybe the movers, and actually get into the, like your, your next rental property, the first month's rent, deposit, all that stuff? Like, yeah. And probably five, six, seven grand. Okay, got it. So now I, 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 I'm I, kind of panning out what they're going to do, right? So if they're just going to pay off the truck and then they need about seven grand to to move so their family get a new start. Um, now I have a better idea. It's like if we're able to make this happen, right? If you're able to, you know, pay off your truck, if you're able to get, you know, get seven plus thousand and moving. So the moving expenses is taken care of. You don't have to worry about that at all. I mean, with that, how would that affect your, how would that make you guys feel? I'm just curious. And so now, now we built that gap. It's like, okay, if you hit this, what, how would that make you feel? And so we're going to, again, we're going to like, that's the, that's the goal, right? That's what they want to do. So every offer, it's all about, this is my offer. So that you avoid the pain and you're going to the pleasure. So like, here's, here's my offer. Here's my, my cash offer. And also there's an offer we can actually give you a little more. So that I'm, we're going to buy this property in payments so that the foreclosure stops and you don't have to have that, whatever they said, I said it back to them, so that you can, whatever carrot they're looking for, pay off that, well, the down payment would be big enough to pay off your truck and more than enough for the, for the moving expenses and you'll actually get money on a monthly basis. So you actually can have that peace of mind, whatever they would say, like they wanted to get, what, how would they feel after the fact if they did something like that, right? So I just, it's just repeating back what they said when you actually give them the offer. When you're doing it like that, even when the offer is like, and I'll go more, we can do maybe next Friday, I can go like actually specifically how I present my offers. 
but when you're doing when you go through all this any type of selling and we buy and we sell like properties specifically 100 percent from emotion so if you tap into that emotion most of those objections that you would normally hear never even come up so if you're getting people like oh like i are you just trying to lowball me are you low so if someone's if someone's saying that you're just oh you're just lowballing me aren't you unless you're genuinely lowballing them which i i don't like that particular strategy but that to each their own um i like to give people my highest and best to, right from the get-go uh hey guys if if you ever lowballed someone put put lowball on in the or or put lowball in the comments because just for fun i've low, i have lowball people so don't, I'm not, not uh, saying, but my current strategy, I don't, I don't like to lowball people. But the thing is like, even like my, my offer could be a hundred thousand dollars less than what they are, they're literally asking for. It's rarity when they ever think or say, are you lowballing? Are you just lowballing me? What do you, that, that's, that never comes up because they're not thinking like, it's not, my offer is going to be not the ideal scenario but that now they're emotionally attached to the results of that offer. If I'm buying a hammer, I don't care any about the features that I really, I really honestly don't care about what the hammer is or whatever. I care what the hammer can do. I'm going to go to the store and I can see a hammer salesman and he's going to say, this is the newest hammer. It, you know, it, it lights up and it has this extra blah, 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 this feature. I'm like, okay, that's cool, but I have a pile of wood at home and my wife wants a shelf, so I need a hammer to make that happen. I care about making my wife happy. To make her happy, I need to make the shelf. And to make the shelf, I need the hammer. So I don't care about the hammer, I care about making my wife happy because she makes me feel good. So that's the emotion from me wanting to buy a hammer. Right, That that's the difference, does that make sense? So when you're when you're setting an offer, they don't care about the numbers. They care about their emotional needs and, and their you know, physical needs too, right? They care about those emotional needs. And if you tie your offer into those needs, it makes sense for them. You're attaching it all emotionally. It's not just black and white. Here's the numbers. Do you want it or not? <clears throat> now, some scenarios, that's... There's, that's all you can do. Cause if I'm looking for something on the market, I, I'll talk to my realtor and then my, their realtor, talk to their realtor, and then they'll throw in an offer. So it's, it's very hard to kind of get, find out why they want to sell the emotions of it. You're just kind of throwing stuff at the wall, see what fits, which is okay. A lot of people do that. I, I personally rather not waste my time. Now I would rather have a genuine conversation with an off market person where I'm the only one that knows it's for sale. Cause there's lots of ways of finding that out. And I, I, I can, we can talk about if you want to learn how to do that type in the comments off market deals we, we can talk about that later okay type in the comments off market deals if you like to know how to find properties where you are the only one that knows this for sale you're not competing with anyone else you're able to sit down and have a genuine connection with someone if you want to learn, learn how to do that let's or even just just curious right uh, put in the comments off market deals okay now we have this emotional attachment. 90% of those objections are gone because you've gone more than ser service level. Now let's say that even if you did service level and they have some genuine concerns, um, genuine concerns about you know selling it at whether that's discount. Now if you're if you're at the emotional level, mostly the concerns with them selling at a discounted rate goes away. Like I rarely have anything like that. Um, now when it's like seller financing then there's some more objections that kind of pop up like even if they're like motion attached but still like wait a minute i just don't understand everything about this i've heard scary things like i feel you but i i need you i need you to resolve some questions i have some questions right and that's okay so them having questions having objections doesn't necessarily mean you weren't connected emotionally right sometimes it's just some of like the the fine-tuning details type stuff right and if they're asking those type of questions it's usually me they're on board they just want to they want to make sure they understand it before they agree to it Okay. So those are not necessarily objections. That's just more clarifying, but there's a lot of cool stuff. Okay. All right. Um, love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So 
they you get an offer you know you you express that hey, this is going to get rid of the pain point it's going to get you to where you want to go and they give you some and you're doing creative financing stuff so what is creative financing so that's i'm gonna say seller financing guys but seller financing is synonymous with all the other creative financing strategies okay so i may say seller financing but maybe referring to a subject two or a lease option or you know there's there's many or actual just seller financing so let's just kind of put that all in the out there right because that does get get used to even though each one of those things are different and you'd have different paperwork you know as far as like lease option contract for deed um even like doing a jv with a particular seller what, whatever it's synonymous with like seller financing just to make things a little simple so but just to does that make sense guys okay great so on here um perfect so once you so for seller financing objections on seller financing right we got through emotional level now they're 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 actually asking detailed questions about this so a lot of questions a lot of things that they that a lot of objections that have uh, come across <clears throat> And there's ways where I've kind of like kind of eliminated a lot of that even before they even asked it. But uh, the biggest concern with doing creative financing, seller financing with sellers, especially if they don't quite understand it, like they may have heard something about it, but you know, from their uncle Joe and told them that it's, it's a bad idea. But it's like, oh, dude, I can, you end up with like an extra 200,000 if we do it this way. And like you're, it's like real, right? One of the best scenarios, or excuse me, the when they're asking about that, a lot of the, their con a lot of objection I get is is like, oh, well, what happens if you stop making payments? And by the way, this is true for any objection. Whatever the objection is, if you make it into a big deal, they will think it's a big deal. If you make it as if like it's not a big deal at all, like it's nothing, they will assume that as well. Right? It's the same thing. If I give my offer and I know it's it's a lot lower than they were expecting, if I say if I'm if I'm like kind of stressed about it a little bit, like, well, I mean, I can get you, a, I mean, like 195. I know that's not what you wanted, you know, uh, you know. And so they're like, well, man, yeah, can't you go higher than that? But if if I if I go into the if I act like forgive in that scenario, like, oh yeah, great news. This is really good news. I can get you the 195. So that you can uh, sell their house before it goes to foreclosure and avoid those those X Y Z things that they said, and so that you can actually pay off your truck, have the moving expenses, and not have this foreclosure in record anymore. Right. So I'm like, even though I know it's like, if I say it, I'm like I'm I'm nervous about giving them the offer because it's so low. It's the same thing. Same thing when when you're addressing their their objections. If their objection is like, well, what if what if you stop making payments? What happens then? What happens to us? And like, oh. And you always want to validate them first. So this is like the formula, okay? And this is the formula for, for absolving most objections, okay? This is the formula. To absolving most objections is to one, validate their objection. Oh yeah, of course. You, I, would be, I would be concerned if you weren't thinking that. But, not but, excuse me. I would be concerned if you weren't thinking about that. Or, like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I'm, I'm really glad you asked that. And the reason why, so it's whatever the question, so like not make payments, right? So dude, Bob, I'm so glad you asked that question. That's, that's a really good question. A lot of the people that are selling their home in your scenario that has done seller financing with this had that exact same question. And here's the thing, I wanna put things in context for you. We're gonna be putting down $20,000 to purchase the property from you. And then we're putting an additional $60,000 down because I've already talked about the repairs. I'm gonna put another $60,000 just, just to repair it. And here's the thing, I'm not necessarily in the business to to putting down, you know, seventy thousand dollars or eighty thousand dollars of, of of my money to not make my payments. So, anyways, and then I ask them another question. So you validate validate them, address the concern, and then ask a question to keep the conversation moving. A question that's not about now, like, oh, does that make sense? Is that are you cool with that? About the next step. Right. Oh yeah, I totally get why that. Why are you concerned of us not making payments? You know, but think about this. I'm putting in six, you know, twenty thousand dollars down. I'm doing. I'm going to be putting in sixty thousand dollars of payment. I'm not in the business to put in eighty thousand dollars in 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 a deal to not make payments and have you take over 
take over the property just to lose everything. But anyways, so the next steps we're going to do here is da -da -da -da, whatever it was, right? It kind of depends where that's in the conversation is. But you just move on. You ask them the next question or you or you just move on to the next next point that we're going to get to, right? So validate, address, question. Validate, address, question. That's it. And then that, that gets through most objections because if you're going to act like it's a big deal and, and they may have more questions after that. Well, wait, what about... Oh, sure. Yeah. And just, you just repeat it. Do the same thing, not repeat. But for that new objection, you just kind of repeat that same process. You validate, address, question. Validate, address, question, slash, moving on to the next subject or whatever it was. Right? You have to, and you give them a real answer, right? The same scenario. It's like, well, I don't, I mean, yeah, I get what you're saying, but what if, what if like you saw me payments, you know, and then you end up the house is just more destroyed than, than, than it started, you know? And, or what if you just made the down payment and left and like, like, well, you know what? I mean, that's apps, right? You know, I'm sure there's some really crazy people that would love just to throw you money and, and you don't know me very well. And that could be one of those crazy people. So I totally get where you're coming from. Uh, but here's, here's a cool part. If, if I made, if I gave the down payment and then I just disappeared, you would actually be able to take over the property again and you would keep any money that I've already given you. Plus any repairs we've already done in the property. Like if I was able to, two years down the road and I just went to Mexico you would keep all the payments I've made in the meantime plus the down payment and then you gain control of the the of the property with probably a renter in there and then guess what a, the property would probably appreciate it in the past in the, in the next two years so it's worth more so then you can just sell it and make more money so worst case scenario you make more money right when you show like even the worst case scenario that you like you're worried about me not making payments you want that to happen by the way this is how this is why this is this is what it is does that make sense are we good off market deals all right seth wants to know love it love it we'll, we'll, we'll probably do uh next week or either next week i'm either gonna do let's put a little poll guys in in the for next sat next friday you guys want to be talking about off market deals or we're going to talk about uh presenting the offer in like in details we're kind of going a little bit over that tonight today but but this is uh this is mostly just focusing on objections if that makes sense right so put in off market deals or or uh or presenting offers like how do you present an offer to a seller okay so how do you find off market deals we might be able to do off market deals first because then in the next week could be presenting the offer because if you find the deal, then like, okay, great. Now I need to find out how to present it, right? Okay, great. So now we know kind of the process of it. So let's go into more specific questions and put in the chat right now, even if you're watching the replay, what are some of the questions that you're having um, or what are some objections you've been getting or that you're worried about getting with with dealing with sellers, whether that's because you know your, your lower offer, you're trying to get creative financing, any stuff like that, right? Um, another another uh, objection that I get sometimes with creative financing, right? So, like, so what happens if um, you know you buy my house and and we're leaving the mortgage in place? You know, so this is a subject to scenario. You're leaving the mortgage in place, and I still want to buy. You know, I mean, because I miss some I miss some payments, so I'm probably not going to qualify right away. But in like the next two years or so. I'm probably going to want to try to buy another house. And so what happens when, when I have the mortgage in place or when, when I already have a mortgage still in my name you know, on a property that I don't even own anymore, like how's that going to affect me? First of all, when, when any of this stuff happens, by the way, when you're, when you're talking about credit, you're talking about finance, like getting financing for certain things, you need to make sure that you are not presenting yourself as, as necessarily an expert in that field. Unless, unless you are licensed and you you are an expert in that field. Because you can get yourself in big trouble. If I start talking about, oh yeah, this is what will happen to your credit exactly X, Y, and Z. If I if, if work gets out, like if they, they, they don't take my deal or they do, and then like, oh yeah, Jared said this would happen, but it didn't happen exactly like he said. Um, you can get yourself into some, some big trouble, right? So don't present yourself as an expert in those categories. What I like to do is say, for example, if we're talking about credit and they're worried about, you know, what happens with my credit, that could be one of their objections. I'll say, yeah, I, 
I mean, with foreclosures, I know someone that they got in foreclosure and, and uh, it was on their, their record for like seven years. So, I mean, I, I'm, no, I'm no credit expert. I mean, I, I imagine that's kind of true across the board. And so I'm not saying this will happen to them. I'm saying I know a guy that this happened and this was his outcome. So you're kind of saying it without actually saying it's going to happen to them directly, right? So with, with uh, the mortgage thing, right? So they want to see how would I get pre-qualified? I'm like, yeah, I, I, I totally get where you're coming from. That, that's, a, that's a really good concern. And here's, here's what I've, I've learned. Um, and there's a lot of people that, that, that I know. It really depends on the mortgage broker because there's certain products that like, you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to touch. Whether they have a lot of, lot of programs. I know brokers where they can actually look at and seeing that with all the paperwork and documents that this other company is actually making payments onto that property. And by then, I'll probably have a renter in there so they can even see that on top of that. And so they don't count that against your 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 income to debt ratio because it's, it's, it's kind of been taken over there. But you have to kind of check with your with your mortgage broker. And if not, I can give you some recommendations. But I know you I know you do your own research and figure that out. But it's, depending on where you go, I, I know I know a lot of people that were able to get around that without a problem, especially if it's especially if it's two years down the road because you have two years of payments being made over here and everything else. So that's how I address that typical that particular concern, right? Because it's true, I, I know mortgage brokers that they 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 gotten like within two months later, as long as there were a payment made, they were able to get them some products where they could buy another home, providing that their credit was okay, right? It was fixed within a month or two of them selling their property from subject to subject to the existing mortgage. Now, will that be for every single broker? Would that be for every single product that's out there in the world for for loans wise, as far as buying houses? Maybe not. I don't know. But I can definitely tell the truth in saying I know people that have done X, Y, and Z. And and I want them to go verify it too. Like, it's not me. And most people, like, generally don't, right? But that I want them to. I want them to make sure if every broker they're talking to said this is a terrible idea and, and those are the only brokers they're going to. And even if I give them my recommendation and that guy says, like, well, in your scenario, it's kind of rough. I, I would not want them to do the deal then if that's that's going to stop them from from doing this. Does that make sense? If it's going to stop you from living your carrot, the dream you're looking for, then don't do it. Let's, we can buy a different strategy or we can do, I, I can hit next, you know, there's other ways of doing things, right? So yeah, definitely, definitely way to go. Um, other objections, put in the, put in the comments guys, right? I'm still going to go into uh, seller financing, right? Because that's when you get a lot of objections that people don't really know, under, understand, or know how to eliminate those objections. Okay. So, um, what happened? So we talked about what happened when they, if you stop making payments, right? Whatever that. Uh, what happens if I can, if I can't buy another property? What other what other objections are you, are you guys getting when you're talking about seller financing? When you're talking about lease option, or talking about subject to, or what whatever the strategy may be, right? What other objections are you guys getting? Even as replay, put it in the comments, okay? So one may be like, oh, well, well, I just want to be done and out of it. I don't want to, I don't, I want all my money now. And that's when I, that's when I asked him the question. It's like, oh yeah, I, I totally get why you, why you'd want all the money now. Like that makes perfect sense. Uh, but let me, let me ask this. If, if you don't want me asking, um, if I haven't already asked this question, by the way. Um, so when, when you do get all the money down, this, you know, like we, Let's say we had a, an agreement and we just did it this way and that's fine. Uh, what what would you do with with the money? And by the way, guys, um, my stammering as I ask the questions, I do that in real life. I, I it's the senile old man. I'm very good at that. It comes naturally for some reason, <clears throat> but it's it's it draws them in. When you do pauses and your tonality and curiosity tonality it draws them in curiosity. So when I'm trying to find the right, the right words, right? It, it draws them in. Okay. Even it may annoy the hell out of some people, <laughs> but in, in reality, in practice, it really does draw people in. And so they're curious about what I'm going to say. And so they're more engaged and they're, they're, they're more in tune emotionally with me by being, the senile, senile old man. Okay. Phenomenal. Okay. Um, 
right? Okay, so Seth says, nothing yet, scared to start. Okay, that's understandable, right? So you're not getting objections because you haven't started, right? On that one, if you're scared to start, the best way is to recognize that Seth, your first conversation with the seller, this is hard to hear, but you're going to suck at it. And, and it's not a surprise to you to hear that, but you are going to suck at it. And you inherently know that's probably why it's a little scary. If you acknowledge that and embrace that you will suck at it and knowing the next time you do it, it's not going to be as bad. It helps out a lot. Fear is always something in the future. So another way to get rid of fear is being present. If I'm going hiking, you know, I, and there's cliffs everywhere like that. Like I'm not, I'm not afraid of what's going to happen or so let me back up. If I go hiking, we're talking about fear. If I go hiking and I, I see a snake, a rattlesnake right in front of me, we're in Utah, very common thing to happen. My fear is, Oh, I'm shoot. I am scared because I'm afraid that the rattlesnake will bite me even farther away for, you know, away from me, but I'm still afraid of him biting me. Let's say he does bite me, like got me a surprise, whatever. I am no longer afraid of him biting me. I might be afraid of what will happen to me in the future. I might be afraid of like, will I die in the future? I might be afraid of like, what's the venom going to do? How much damage it's going to do? Am I, I'm afraid that I might, you know, trip and fall as I'm walking down. But again, listen to all those fears. Those are all in the future. Once something happened, I'm no longer afraid of it. Once the snake has already bit me, I'm not afraid of being bitten by a snake. Or that snake and it went away, right? Now, obviously, there's another, there's like a whole pile of snakes. One bites me. I'm like, okay, I'm still afraid of all the other snakes too, right? Even the one went away, right? But we're always afraid of something in the future. So if you're present and 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 embrace the suck, as I say, because realizing that you're going to suck and just dive into it. Like, okay, it's going to suck. My first, you guys should have heard my first phone calls. It was terrible. My first door knocking experience was just utterly just terrible. It was so bad. But I kept on going then until I got good at it. Okay. Um, my goodness, what was the subject we were talking? What was the objection I got before I, before before I went off on a fear tangent? <laughs> what was it? Put in the comments. What, what was I talking about, guys? Help me out here. Um, we were talking. Oh yeah, uh, if they, they want all their money now. Okay, there it is. So if they just want all the money now, not to deal with it, like okay, fine. So if you don't want me asking, what? What are you planning to do, you know, um, after you sell the property and, and you know, we, we don't do anything creative on financing and you're able to buy it, you get all the cash. Like what, what do you, what do you plan to do? And feel free to tell me, you know, none of my, none of my business, but what are you afraid of? Or what are you, what are you going to do with, with, uh, with the money? I'm just curious. And then they'll say whatever they'll say, oh, we're going to do this, this, and this. Like, oh, really? So, oh, oh I'm going to buy a new car. Oh, really? So how much, like, what kind of car, do you know what kind of car you're going to get or, or how much you'd have to kind of put into that? And they'll say, and so they're, they're tallying up how much it's going to cost them to do whatever they want to do. Right. So now I know like they're going to, they're going to get a hundred thousand dollars. They bought, we did this in cash and they're going to put $30,000 into a car and paying off debt, whatever. I'm like, okay, great. I, I get that. Now, and so the other you know, 70,000, that's just going to sit in your, in, in your bank. Is that right? Well, yeah, I'll keep it for a rainy day or, you know, we're going to put it for a time, whatever. Right. I'm like, okay. So, or put it in the stock market. I'm like, okay. So the stock market is getting, you know, 7% interest or whatever. And it goes up and down. Like in 2008, like people had stuff in the stock market, they lost all, they lost all like the whole retirement. Or when they were in, um, you know, a couple even this last year, people had stuff in there. It all it kind of just dropped, right? We had a, kind of a big uh, downslide in, in the stock market stuff. It's kind of hard to say what's going to happen, right? I was like, how would you like to have a more secure way of actually making your time a little bit better? So, and I say, what if we did this? If we purchased your property, making payments, but we made the down payment for thirty thousand dollars, so that you can buy that new truck you're looking for and pay off XYZ debt. And I'll, you're, you're going to charge me interest 
which is probably going to be a little bit better than what you're getting in the stock market, and it's backed by real estate. Wouldn't that be better than XYZ? Right? Or another thing, too, for objections, right, is if they're saying, like, so they want the, they want all their money, like, okay, great, awesome. Um, can I ask you a question? Would you, you know, as I'm kind of, you know, writing up this offer and, and, and making things work out for us, uh, do you... Do you want me to write it so you can, you know, end up paying, so you end up having to pay more taxes or would you like me to do it so you pay, you know, the least taxes possible? Well, like, well, what, I'm going to pay less taxes. Or I say, like, do you want to pay a lot of, do you want to pay more taxes or less taxes? Oh, less taxes. Like, okay. And I, and I say, again, like, hey, and I'm no tax expert when I say this stuff, right? So I'm not a tax, tax expert. I know I know you're going to go verify with your CPA, with your tax person, to verify if anything I say is true or not. Because I, I just I just know a, f a few things, but, you know, it's just from my personal experience and, and other people. So do you have any idea when you do sell the property, like what kind of capital gains or what kind of taxes you're going to have to pay once you sell the property? Oh, yeah. I mean, you probably have to pay, you know, you know, decent amount, even if it's like their personal home. So they don't necessarily have to worry about ta capital gains. But like, like what happens when, you know, you make this hundred thousand dollars and that's going to show you, you know, as potential income, right? So you made a hundred thousand dollars this year and that, that puts you in the kind of the highest tax bracket, wouldn't it? And like, well, yeah, maybe like, okay. I mean, if we, if we did it a way where you didn't necessarily have to worry about that too much, would you be open to that type of conversation? Well, well yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm, I'm open to the conversation. Like, great. So this is how we're going to do it. I buy the property at the, you know, this price, but we're going to do it in payments. So that way you're, you would actually get, uh, you're, you're only taxed on, and, and I know people that, that have done this and, and, and they've, I was told that they, they get taxed on the, what they were actually received, not the total, what they, not what they sold the property for. So if the down payment is X and they got X in payments, you're only taxed on that. And the next year you're taxing, you know, the payments and so on and so forth. So you, typically for depending on the scenario, you're usually in a lower tax bracket. Um, so now they're like, okay, great. So they're going to save money in, in taxes. If we do creatively, they're also going to uh, make, make money off because they're going to get the down payments. We have to do their things that they want and the extra $70,000 that they're leaving on the note or on the property is going to be, it's going to make them money. Okay. <clears throat> what other objections? I'm still asking, waiting for you guys to put some more in there in the comments, guys. But as far as objections go, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So with, with uh, other objections, okay, with seller financing, okay, we can do more into that. Um. An objection I get, we start with the mortgage, talk about the, the money, and then uh, what if we do, we don't make payments? Uh, what if you stop making payments? We went over that too as well. Uh, any other common objections we get with seller financing or, or just in, in, in general, we can kind of talk about that. So as far as overcoming objections with selling a discount, we kind of talked about that. If you're emotion, if you emotionally drained, if you emotionally attached it, you're not gonna get too much of that, right? And sometimes the thing is like the biggest way to kind of overcome a lot of the objections, because if they're feeling sales resistance, if you're depending on how you're addressing everything, maybe and I, I, I fall into the same, I'm not perfect in every, every scenario, right? Sometimes I'm just not feeling it. I'm not saying, asking the right questions. I just kind of want to get in and out kind of a deal and I'm just not doing everything I, I should. But uh, so let's say they have an objection about, you know, the price point they can't sell at this price and what what i what i find is and this is true for most objections too is using something called release statement a release statement is as a great is exactly it releases them from the sales pressure when you're in when you're in a scenario if someone's trying to you know you're trying, trying to buy their house from you or they're trying to make you know sell something to you there's some sales pressure there just inherently so you need to get into you know, get, get release that pressure by doing release statements. So a release statement is something along the lines of like, Hey, I totally understand if, 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 uh, if you, if you can't accept this offer, 
that's totally fine. We have no problem with that. We have plenty of other transactions we're working on right now too. So now it's like they they like oh, okay. It's like anything like that. Like hey, this may be a great deal for you. I don't know. I I, I think it's a great win win. But if you can't accept it, we we have no problem like that. Right. So you can actually go in and and address address things that way, right? So we're putting in um, these release release statements, and I sprinkle release statements uh, across the board, right? So I sprinkle in the release statements, so they they release. You're you're constantly disarming, you're constantly disarming them, re releasing sales pressure throughout the entire conversation, and then if you do that, you're going to get a lot less objections. Right. So as you're giving those release statements, they're feeling better. They're feeling more, you know, um, engaged. They're feel they have that connection. That rapport is built naturally because I'm using the I'm matching I'm matching and mirroring their body language. And so again, I, I haven't given you a ton of like phrases and things to overcome objections. But what I've really given you is is the framework to really overcome almost every objection as far as like, you know, uh, the framework to overcome those objections. And to and to to structure your your presentation or your offer in a way that they feel comfortable and like they understand it. So even like if I'm if I'm given an offer, um, and they think it's too low, the best way I find to do that is actually give them a real number. So if if lowballing scenario, even without seller financing, I always have my notebook with me when I'm when I'm actually in a person's place, and I will. Writing things down, like okay, great. Let me, you know, I saw the property. I have an idea as far as what kind of needs to happen for us to hit our hit hit the you know hit our numbers and and what you guys are looking for. Can you guys give me like a, a minute or two? I got to do some math real fast, and I can give you an offer right here and now. Like oh yeah, sure. Like I've always unless it's like in the emergency having to leave, but by then I I mean I don't want to give them an offer right then and there because then they're we're not able to have a, an actual conversation to have them sign it. So. Okay, great. Let me, and so I'll just do math. Even if I already know, even if I already know my exact offer, the, the clipboard's amazing, by the way. So I just, I, I, I'm doing math. I get my phone out. I do my calculations and I raise the three and I get my, you know, I'm kind of scouting. Like, mm. And so, and I give them an exact number, right? Cause I've already kind of go over the stuff I need to repair. What needs to happen to, for repairs? What needs to happen for X, Y, Z thing? Um, and so I'll give them exactly what to offer. So I'll give you, okay, great news. Oh, this is sweet. And be excited by it. This is how to get rid of low balling objection, okay? Or like them feeling, even if they don't accept it, they're not gonna, they're not gonna think you're low balling. Oh, this, okay, good news. Oh, yeah. All right, I think this is, this is, this is amazing. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Um, in order to, to stop whatever the pain point was, right? So in order to, to stop, you know, closure and having all that that headache just removed from your guys's life and so you're you're you know and you're just repeating back with what the whole conversation was before right you're you're kind of like all of that stuff pinpoint da, da, da. um i can offer you uh, uh 345,000 uh $543.15 so that you would actually walk away with with enough money to pay off that truck and pay off xyz date or that date debt Whatever it was, right? So whatever they're, so you're like, I sandwiched the offer between the pain point and to where they want to go. So now it's connected both ways. So now like, oh, this offer is is connected there and it's a very specific, I'll put cents and 12 cents, done. It's a real offer to them. It's not a fake number. If I say I can give you, I'll give you $350,000. All right. How about you? Can you give me, you know, give me three sixty? I well, I need I need three eighty. Those are just round numbers. They're not a real number. If I say three hundred forty five thousand five hundred forty five dollars and thirteen cents, it's like, oh wow, that's. And they'll say like, can you, can you come up a little bit? Like, I mean, I I would, but like that's that's my literally my highest and best. I did, I just did the math. If I did any lower, it, it's not going to hit our, our our minimums. It's even you know for the risk because we're risking. Three hundred and forty-five dollars, and da da da, and then plus the rehab and the holding costs. I mean, we're risking a lot, so this is literally my highest and best, right? Okay, so even if they don't accept my offer, they they 
they don't think they, they literally under they believe me that that's my highest and best like okay you're not just trying to low ball and get the best you know obviously i'm trying to get a great deal of course but at that number that's where i'm at and so the the, the negotiation that they lose that power to kind of try to like you know catch you up and the thing is that the problem with that with investors if i just do like hey 350 and then we start going up because once you kind of like well yeah i guess i can make five thousand dollars less or you know we probably could do the rehab and you get caught up in the negotiation part of it when it's like okay all right so you wanted 400 i'm gonna ask them say 300 and then you're gonna say 350 and i'm gonna say three 375 blah, blah, and all that crap then you're, you're you as the seller or buyer is getting caught up in the emotion part of it too which you don't want you want to know like this is my hard stop this is the number that's what i can get even if you're even if you want to you know send, present an offer lower than that so you have some room if you had to go up which is fine but you're you don't want you need to have a closed off number so you're not putting yourself in that type of situation where, where you are drawn in by the emotion of getting the deal that that's that's not a go so hard numbers being transparent line it with their emotion what their pain point is and what their carry it is that'll get rid of any well just about most objections plus it'll get rid of the the low ball objection okay right love it love it uh any objections before i, I sign off guys I, there's a lot more stuff we can go into in depth but again we just want to you know acknowledge their acknowledge their concern acknowledge their their objection address it and then question slash move on that that's the formula okay acknowledge it address it and move on and and if you're getting a lot of objections let's keep putting out objections a lot of times the first couple are not the real objections, right? Um, then you need to keep on asking them and have them help them resolve. It's an opportunity to be curious, opportunity to ask questions about that because uh, everyone have off off the wall objections, right? So I had, uh, yesterday we were talking to this guy, he was really concerned if we do seller financing and then that we do, we're gonna do any of the basement work. Like and we have to like dig down and actually create, create a, a, you know, you know, do some foundation work, which is super expensive, which we have zero intention doing. But I told him that, like, yeah, I, I totally get that. You know, I mean, that's your, that's your investment on there. But the thing is, like, yeah, we're, we're not planning to do that. But if, if it really concerns you, we can actually put that in, in writing. Would that, would that help you? You know, and so you can do a lot of cool stuff like that to, you know, address people's concern. But I got to run. I got to another appointment here. But uh, adios, muchachos. Put in the comments, um, like, closing costs, realtor costs, et cetera. Oh. Well, usually we just take care of that as far as closing costs. But uh, guys, if you want, if you want to have a, an actual conversation with me, go to Ask Jared, or so, excuse me, there's a website you can go to, um, or just go to my link tree and you set, a, set up an appointment to have a conversation with me. I'll put it in the chat too. But uh, it's just go to link tree forward slash Ask Jared. Um, oh shoot, yeah. But uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta run. I got another appointment here. But I love you guys. Appreciate you. And adios.